This is the story of how a small food cart in New York City became a nationwide brand and a household name. For me, this is the better kind of halal. A story that's only possible in America. And while the immigrant founders made it famous, there was one mysterious man who had nothing to do with halal guys. Put it on the map. All right, I just found halal guys. The original halal guys truck is right there. It started right here in New York City behind me an american phenomenon this is the original halal guys food car right in the heart of new york city this is where it started the chicken and the red meat with rice and pita lettuce tomatoes and the sauces that's it nothing fancy they call shawarma here gyro you call them gyros there gyros yeah yeah, yeah. how did this all begin and who are these halal guys egyptian immigrants come to the u.s they work white collar jobs cleaning floors washing dishes all that stuff i've done it too in australia they saved enough to get a food cart and started selling hot dogs for halal guys it was just hot dogs but they noticed the taxi drivers the cabbies the famous yellow cab drivers who were mostly muslim we're praying in the middle of the street here right in front of that and they wanted halal food halal meat of new york city make some noise halal brothers They didn't have much options in this location, and they told them. The story of halal guys doesn't start on the streets of New York, but on the streets of Egypt. The original halal guys, Muhammad Abu Alanin, Abdul Basat Al Sayyid, and Ahmed Al Saka, saw a niche and switched to halal meat. One day a journalist came to cover this story, but their card didn't have a name. Not even a name. She asked them, What should I call you? They said, Call us whatever you want. And she said, Well, you're a bunch of guys, and you sell halal food. Why don't I call you halal guys? And that gave them this name. This honestly, the, the thing that attracted like was yeah. the smell. Yeah. It smelled really good. Yeah. The prices were good. Yeah. Like, let's give it a shot. Halal food is still rare in America. It's not like Australia, where even some McDonald's and Burger King franchises are halal. And there's a lot of stigma with the word halal itself among people who don't know about Muslims. So halal guys helped change a lot of negative perception towards the halal method of slaughtering, and also Muslims in general. More than 95 percent of its customers are non-muslims people of other faiths or no faiths for me this is the better kind of halal if you like i've not had this before but i've had like a halal hamburger from mcdonald's in malaysia oh really that wasn't great <laughs> yeah but this is it smells really good it looks like it's prepared well it is a phenomenon and a success story the most popular thing about halal guys is not even the halal meat it's the white sauce. Uh, white sauce all over? Yeah, just like, just a little, a little bit of chicken, please. Okay, no problem. Like a lot of it. Not a lot of people outside of America even know about the Halal Guys, but in America, it is a known brand. They've reached the incredible milestone of a hundred stores. A hundred stores! The question is, how did it spread from a cart in New York City to all over America? And the answer is franchising. Franchising Halal Guys is no cheap affair. You need to have at least $2 million in the bank. And it wasn't Halal Guys who initiated it. It was a man not many people even know about. A man named Dan Rowe. The man behind the expansion of places like Kuduba and Five Guys. He saw the immense potential of Halal Guys and reached out to them. It took him a year to convince the Halal Guys management to start franchising, but he finally won. Yeah. And I would walk by the Halal Guys all the time and, you know, those lines are half to, halfway down the block, which is my first rule. Customers vote with their wallets. They're willing to stand in line to get that food. And so we approached them and we basically, it took me about a year to talk them into wanting to franchise. They had three cards, so it took them 25 years to get three cards. They have three cards. Four and a half years later, we're about 100 units all across North America. What were the halal guys afraid of? Why won't they expand and franchise? It was the fear of losing their authenticity, their core competence. And even though halal guys had been successful in several markets like the South and the West, their fear came true. The food and the atmosphere is just not the same as the original cart on 53rd Street. It's New York and it's on the street. But just in New York, it's on the street. It's unique and tastes out of this world. But when franchise, it loses its ambiance and in some cases flavor too. But that's how the rest of America is. Just like New York City is an exception to the rest of America. So it makes sense for halal guys to adapt or die or they won't be able to make it. And guess what? They are not stopping. Their next goal is 400 stores worldwide, with stores already open in Canada, the UK, and even South Korea. But if you want the real deal, you have to visit them in the concrete jungle where dreams are made of. Look at the line. I'm not getting my meal tonight.